Ah, Sinker Redwood. Limited edition Taylor. 914. Hmm. Greetings, Internet. This is Christopher McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And look, I'm wearing our new shirt. If you'd like to get one of these retro design Alamo Music shirts since 1929, check out below in our Teespring store and you can get one. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, uh, turn on notifications, and like our video. Today, we are doing a review for you of the new NAM Limited Edition Taylor 914 CE for 2019. This is limited NAM. So let me tell you what that means. A NAM Limited Edition guitar means that it is not a normal limited guitar that's going to have wide release. It is only for select dealers that were at the Winter NAM show, that were at an event that Taylor put on and chose to purchase these instruments. So they're done in limited number to a limited audience. Um, and they're fantastic instruments. In this particular case, it is a new 914 CE with a Sinker Redwood top. So let's go over the specs and let you hear what this beautiful guitar sounds like. 914 CE means it is a 900 series Grand Auditorium guitar with a cutaway and the ES2 pickup system as far as the electronics go. The 900 series appointments carry over from the standard line to this limited edition. Now what, those, what that means is that you get beautiful ebony binding with a radius armrest. It is uh, East Indian Rosewood back and sides. The top, the back and sides, all of the binding is, has this beautiful framed purfling of koa that you can see kind of framing all of this black ebony and as well as on the top. The top is bordered in beautiful, colorful abalone uh, around the perimeter of the top, the sound hole, and the fretboard extension. Up the neck, we follow the Ascension series inlay to the very top of the headstock, which is also crowned with ebony, that inlay, and the Taylor logo. And on the back, you have beautiful antique gold Goto 510 tuners and this ebony backstrap. It's a beautiful guitar any 900 series is. Inside you have the V-Class bracing, and the top on this is where the Limited comes in. It is Sinker Redwood. So Redwood, yes, those huge trees from California. Sinker, is that a new species? No, let's talk about what it is. So the story goes that Sinker Redwood uh, pretty much all comes from the same stash of wood that was discovered in Northern California. Um, so what it means is kind of what it sounds like. It's wood that's sunk. That's why we call it sinker. Uh, and it has been down at the bottom of a river living in silt for a long time. Um, and it was finally dredged up. And the coloring that you see on the top of this is a result of that. So we have these dark striations and this overall very chocolatey appearance uh, because over time, some of the things from the silt kind of seeped into the wood. Now the wood is basically preserved, but it gets colored by the environment that it's in. And there's even some cool things if you kind of hold it in the right light, you can see some iridescence in the wood. And that is from mineral deposits that have actually leached in to the redwood over time. So the story that I understand is that uh, a long, long time ago when California was being settled, they would go and they would cut down these giant redwood trees. Now they would take them down to the river, I believe it was the Mendocino River uh, for the most part, and uh, float these logs down. Now it's not very deep, so they would build dams along the way. The, these giant logs would kind of float till they'd hit a dam, then they'd stay there and they'd sink down and another one would come and you'd have this supply of wood that would build up in sections along the river. When it was a rainy season, these dams would be blown, the wood would rush down river, and you'd have these large uh, kind of streamfuls of redwood. That would get to the lumber mill and from there it was turned into dimensional lumber. Not all these trees made it, right? They sunk down and they embedded themselves into the river silt further and further and further down as the logging seasons would continue. So at some point, and I wanna say the story I read put it in like the late 80s or the early 90s, some of this wood got dredged up. Now the, the story surrounding it, I don't know how much of it is factual, but we'll just go with some people were trussing a bridge, they discovered chunks of this wood brought up, they decided to not ask anybody and just go ahead and start pulling all of this wood up and what ended was a result of a just huge stashes of this very old growth, brilliantly preserved and beautifully fig uh, figured and stained 
redwood. Um, so that's why it looks the way it does. That's why it has its name. That's where it comes from. Why should you care, right? Other than it looks cool and it's got a story to go with it, why should you care about it on the top of your acoustic guitar? Redwood is kind of like cedar on steroids, okay? Um, cedar, if you're not familiar with it, it's used on mostly classical guitars, but on some steel string guitars as well. And it has a wonderful warm tone to it, but it also has a great response and it's a very immediate response. Cedar is a soft wood, and so when you begin to play it, uh, it responds kind of immediately. Now, the downside to cedar is that you can't really strum it, you can't really uh, pick it very hard. Uh, because it's kind of a soft uh, and, and quickly moving wood, you can very quickly overcome the top of the guitar. So if you are a medium to heavy strummer, cedar guitars are gonna break up and kind of sound distorted and, and they're gonna hit a ceiling of their volume really quickly and you're going to struggle as a player. Um, that's why most acoustic guitars that you see on the market are spruce. Redwood falls somewhere in the middle of Sitka spruce and cedar. So that's why we say it's kind of like cedar on steroids. You get that same warm response, this kind of, you know, it's tough to describe sound. I'm going to say it sounds very reddish. There's like a red hue, this warmth, uh, like a fall fire you know, to what you get out of redwood. So you get all this nice warmth, but there's a bit more brightness to it than cedar has. So there, that's those crackles, right? You know, you're going to get some of that sparkle that's going to come out of it. And while it has this immediacy of response, meaning I can play this guitar with a very light touch and have a lot of dynamic range, I can take a pick to it more so than I could a cedar top and get a lot of volume and a lot of kind of articulation out of it. Um, not as much as you would like a Sitka or an Adirondack top for sure. It's still going to have a lower volume ceiling than those would have. But if you play like I do, and you play with a bit of a lighter pick uh, touch, then this is going to be an ideal wood for you. Now I say that owning a custom tailor with a Sinker Redwood top. So when I had mine built, these were not available, which means Taylor's just copying me. Do y'all see that? I see that, they should send me a check. Everyone just email Taylor and say, you owe Chris money. I'm sure that'll go over well. But um, no, in all seriousness, I've always liked this tone wood for the top. Now pairing it with East Indian Rosewood is really nice because East Indian Rosewood has the most bass and has the most treble response of any of the tone woods you typically see on an acoustic guitar. It's got that scooped out mid range and it's just a wonderful tone wood. When you pair it with this, you get a lot of richness, a lot of kind of dark, thick, rich tones, but you get that sparkle as well from that high end and the nice articulation. So what you can expect is a lot of dynamic range with a light touch, great uh, for a light pick attack, um, and a nice, just generally warm response from the guitar. And it plays like butter. So, you know, between the radius armrest and the general action that you have from Taylor, it's a wonderful guitar to hold in your hands. So we're gonna put it through its paces and play a few different pieces on it so that you can hear for yourself what it sounds like. Check it out.
So there you have it. Hopefully you were able to hear that kind of warm, crackling, autumn fire articulation and sound that comes out of this wonderful guitar. Like I said at the beginning, these are limited, uh, both in how many will be produced, when they're going to be available, and the dealers that you can get them from. If you'd like more information about the specs on this guitar, visit our website, it's alamomusic.com, where you can see all the information on this, photos of the guitars, as well as other things that we have in stock. You can also get one of these shirts there or click the uh, Teespring description below. If you want to go directly to this, we'll put a description for that in the video below for you. Uh, these are always great guitars, so I will end with this warning, caveat, okay, public service announcement, the more you know. Um, usually people watch this video and then they call us and we're out. So if you are interested in one of these guitars, you just gotta kind of act now, so to speak. This isn't meant to be salesy. I just am trying to help you so that you don't go looking at every dealer and they're all gone by the time you watch this. If you're watching this six months from now, they're probably all gone. So uh, just fair warning, there you go. So, as always, subscribe, like the videos, turn on notifications. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.